John Stagg with Intermountain Hydronic Specialties and we're here to talk about the cooling tower, cooling water technologies cooling tower. Okay, you guys familiar with cooling towers? Yes. A cooling tower, I knew that was something once before. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Basically a big box full of water. <laughs> um, we're not too familiar with that magnetic... Uh, water probe? That maser, that maser, yeah, the maser. Yeah, that major. That's just gonna be your water level, really, is, is what it is. Um, they do have two different water levels on here. You got your basic okay. mechanical, just your float, and then a the backup is gonna be that laser one over there. Okay. You guys do turn this off for the winter, right? This is just yeah. summer for comfort cooling, right? Well, what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to wrap that uh, bill line. Okay. Because that's gonna definitely break. Yeah, that's. And especially when we have a cold night but a warm day, we're still gonna be in use. That's where we're going to have to get it wrapped. Okay, gotcha. So with the cooling tower, again, just like the pumps, the most important thing you can do on a cooling tower is visual inspection. It's kind of easy. We, we see cooling towers get forgotten all the time. You, just, you know, you've got inside your room here and just forget the cooling tower. It's out there doing its thing. And it's really important to do a visual inspection on the cooling tower. Just kind of do a quick walk around, check for leaks, look inside. You want to look at the bottom of the tower, make sure it looks fairly clean. I mean, I see some, you know, a little leaf and a little bit of dirt. That's normal for a cooling tower. But you want to keep as little as possible on the bottom of the cooling tower. That's where you're going to get your corrosion is if you get dirt. And then the dirt and the metal, you'll get bacteria and stuff up underneath that dirt and that will eat away the metal. You'll start getting pocket marks in it. Can I uh, talk with what is going on up on top? Because mm -hmm. now this tower is something new different because all of our cooling towers has a gearbox. Gotcha. This doesn't. It's a belt. It's a belt. Good. Right. Okay. It's the same idea, fan, and it's on a drive for the speed. Now, is there uh, spray heads up there? Yep, spray nozzles. The spray heads got to be pulled. Yep, got to be cleaned. Now there is a uh, the black mesh, the drip eliminator. Right, you right. You drip a eliminator, which is the same idea, yep. right? Exactly. Every so often, they they got to be pulled. They they got to be cleaned because they're gonna get that uh, build up. Yep. So it's the same thing on this tower. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, basically it's the exact same, but instead of the direct driven motor, it's going to have a belt on it. And that's the only difference. Yep, it's the only difference. Now, okay. to kind of go over a few of the things maintained. So again, when you do drain your system, we highly recommend, not the funnest job, but get inside there and just clean it out. Um, yeah. Because again, that's going to eat away that, that so Yep. It's easy to get in there, climb in there, you a hose, high pressure, whatever you want. Usually that stuff doesn't stick on there. If it's yeah. a garden hose, we'll just wash it out. We recommend that. Again, for some reason, you know, we do a lot of boilers and pumps, and people maintain those really good. But clean towers get forgotten. <laughs> well, the spring around here it is quite busy. We pull long days during the spring. We get things up, and the towers itself, I would say, estimated to do a good job on a tower it takes a uh, uh, a uh, crew, two guys, yep. maybe two days, three days, yep. doing it good. Yep. You're absolutely right, and and to dedicate that kind of time, that's going to make your cooling tower last years. Right. Tens, I mean, you know, 20, 30 years easily, as long as you are maintaining it. Well, because so. if you're spray head, and if you're only getting half of your spray, then it's only doing half of the job. Yep. And that's what's going to happen. Yep. And then through the hot the summer months or what have not, it doesn't work. Why? That's <laughs> because. Yep. Yep. That's exactly why. So with some of the maintenance, then again, you want to check the. Got your ball valve here, it's your standard valve. Looks like it is still turned on. Obviously, you want to watch that for freezing. Yep. Um, you've got your strainer right there at the bottom where the water's coming out. You want to make sure that strainer stays clean of debris. If you notice it starts getting leaves and stuff on it, definitely get that clean because that will create more pressure for the pumps. It could damage your pumps. You want to make sure that stays clean of, of, of debris. Um, that's really it for the sump as long as you're cleaning that sump out at the end of the season or beginning now of the season. The makeup, I believe there is a uh, Johnson. Uh, uh, I jumped in uh, control. <laughs> control on a temperature. When it gets below 30, 40 degrees, it shuts it off. Perfect. Okay. For the makeup. So it's all mechanical. But it's not going to get it drained. You'll want to talk that, to somebody about that. Yeah. yeah. I'm not sure how they're doing that. Um, you know, leaving the water like this for the winter, it's going to freeze, obviously. Oh, for sure. Yeah. It's going to bulk your pan. And it's going to damage it. Yeah. So I would recommend definitely draining it. You know, if it is just for comfort cooling, End of the season, yeah. drain it out, clean it out really good. Right. That's what I would highly recommend. Um, okay, so up on top, 
you've got your, like you said, your fill, you want to clean that fill out, you start getting scale, weeds, dirt, they get pretty dirty. Uh, the manufacturers suggest you do not use any kind of acid, do not use steam, don't use high pressured, because that right. plastic PVC right. stuff, it just, it can, I've seen people get a high power hose and it just, takes us out of right. town. So you want to get a hose, clean it out. It's pretty we easy to clean. We use a uh, DS scaler. Perfect. And it's a uh, baking soda base, I think it is. And, and we actually you know, spray you know. it on, it foams up, we rinse it off, and it's all that Perfect. white scaled off. off. Okay. And that's what you want to do. So you want to make sure you keep that. And again, that just comes down to a visual, visual inspection. Mm -hmm. It's not, I mean, we do recommend once a year, but if you get up there, there's no scale. You know, you, you want to make sure it looks good and you got proper air and water flow through there. You've got the nozzles, again, the nozzles, you want to make sure those are just kept clean. It's, it's a really... Now, I explained to Oscar, this is something different, though, with this tower. The, how, and why does it work? I mean, I should say how it, because we don't, uh, this is not on a, uh, a loop. It's not on a chiller uh, loop. So, what cools? What is it, the evaporation of the coolant tower, and that's how it cools inside the air handler? You're exactly right. So what's going to happen is it's going to take the water from the bottom, and it's going to, so it takes it down through the pumps, and then it's going to bring it up along the top. So as the water, I'm not sure what this is designed for, but probably, typically we see 74, um, 78 is where the water, temp water temperature coming in. Sure. So as it gets on top, it goes over the fill, You've got the fan which is sucking air through here and up past the water. water right. And so as you get the air. So you're pulling the heat out. Exactly. So as the water goes down, the air comes up, you get that evaporation, it pulls right. it out. So then when the water comes down here, now the water's cooled off. From there, it takes that down into the air handlers. And then air handlers add heat back to the water, water comes back in and loses that heat. So this is basically good for a warm day, not, not a hot day. So this is basically during the late, uh, uh, the like early spring, where yeah. we have warm days of maybe 75. I'm not sure how, is there a chiller on this building? Yes, there is. Okay. It, well, it, it is hooked to the chiller. Okay. On so this side. will probably complement the chiller line then. Again, I'm not sure exactly how it was designed. Okay. But I mean, we see a lot of buildings use just cooling towers for the heat of the summer. So it still does work great. Okay. Um, but usually you'll need a chiller to complement it as well. Okay. So. Um, on, on the uh, belt, you will, there's a picture here I'll show you guys, since you guys aren't familiar with belt-driven motors, really all you want to do, I know there's a picture here somewhere, you want to test that belt resistance and you want about a quarter inch deflection. Okay, here we go. Yeah. And so you can kind of see right there, you've got your belt, you just want to take a tape measure rule and make sure there's about a quarter inch to three quarter inch deflection. When you pinch it. Yeah, put, you just push it. As long as there's that, that amount of tightness, yeah. you're, you're good to go. And that is a uh, a B belt. It, it's yes. Probably more like it's it's a B. Yeah, exactly. So that's really the whole idea behind the belt driven motors is just make yeah. sure the belt's good and, and you'll be good to go. It kind of keeps the motor out of the flow of the water and the wind. That's why these guys go with that. You put the motor right where all the water and air is passing by. And just it's not the best for the motor. And so that way you put the motor off to the side a little bit, take a belt, yeah. and it kind of keeps the motor out of the harshest conditions of the right tower. Um, so let me just kind of go over the list they give here, again, just to kind of make sure we have it all. Okay, so every month they suggest a general inspection. Again, walk out and just take a look at it. Once a month, looks good, clean, no leaks. Um, every year they do say inspect the fans. You want to tighten the blades, it's really simple there, and just tighten them. You want to make sure it's got the right pitch right. and uh, check the belts, make sure the belt has the right tension. Every three months, they say come out and inspect the cold, or the cold water basin. You want to inspect the spray nozzles. Again, just kind of a visual inspection, make sure everything's you're getting proper coverage over the media on top. You're going to want to drain the basin and piping. They say at least every three months, they suggest draining it and cleaning it out. Um, again, that's going to stop corrosion. Things get busy. They do say at least every year or at shutdown, do it. They recommend every three months doing it. Um, wow. be, that's like I say. These guys cover their bases. Yeah, that's what yeah, they recommend sure, yeah. is to make sure you know, drain it every three months. Now, when you guys do that, if you come out here, it looks like this. We're good. Yeah. But if you come out here, it's just got algae and all sorts of stuff oh, growing in there sure. and dirt yeah. leaves. Yeah. They'd recommend doing it. Um, you go and inspect your air louvers. You'll inspect these things. Make sure they're in good shape. Um, check, back, check, check belt tension. Get over that. Uh, check and adjust your bleed rates right here. Make sure you get enough water in. 
I don't think there's a bleed on here. Is this, are you guys doing chemical treatment on this? Do yes, you know? we are. Okay. Which is done in the uh, steam room. Okay. And there's the two tanks. One is a uh, a uh, bi uh, biocide, and what the other drum is, I'm not sure. Probably a scale inhibitor. Of it. So you're gonna, and that's what these guys recommend is having the two different right. treatments. You got your biocide, which is gonna kill any bacteria. The fungus has a hard time with algae, but yeah, fungus things like that, mm -hmm. and then also your scale inhibitor to keep scale from forming on your media. Um, obviously, the cooling tower manufacturer doesn't provide treatment, so well, like you right. guys are getting which, it from which we already have. somebody here. Yeah. Perfect. Um, so that's something. Make sure if you really want to watch your your chemical. Make sure. And I'm, are you guys hiring somebody to come do that, or do you guys yeah, do it yourselves? Yeah, no, we don't do it ourselves. So you got yeah, a contract. That, yeah, we have perfect. Contract. So just make sure they're checking the levels on a regular well, we basis, and, and make sure. Well, we do. Uh, we have a couple guys at the heat plant. They go around every day. Perfect. And then they'll actually test. Perfect. And then uh, guy from the uh, from the like outfit that we deal with, and he comes out once a month, and then then he'll double check everything. Making sure that we're on the same page. Perfect. Alrighty. So that's about it. The last thing is, is you want to make sure the fan is spinning in the right direction. You know, it does. It, it, we laugh about that, but we actually find that quite often. You know, when yeah. the electrician or somebody's out there hooking you up to hit it the wrong way, and the fan, and you'll still get air blowing, so you think it's working great, but you're not getting the capacity that it's designed for. So, so if it's it blowing down and all the time you're spraying water out, hey, no, there's no a problem. <laughs> so make sure that you got the fan spinning the right direction. I'd say we would check it today, but it's turned off, I was told by the contractor. So again, come springtime when you guys start this up, feel free to call us up. We can right. come back over and do a little better hands-on with everything. And right. that's the first thing you hear is check rotation. Yep. Exactly, yeah. check rotation. It does happen. Yep. Yeah. So yeah, so feel free to give us a call when you start it up. Cool. Um, but that's pretty much the maintenance for this thing. So. Yeah,